are you still using Postman for API testing? If yes, then you are probably missing out on many factors. Speed, version control, and the most important part, total freedom. So what if I told you that there is an offline first Git native API client that developers are calling it as a game changer. So let me be very honest. Postman can feel very overwhelming, especially for newcomers. Frequent updates often breaks the things and requires constant maintenance. And I've seen this with a lot uh, because of the recent changes. There was a lot of maintenance needed. And Postman have something called Cloud Sync, which sounds good. But what if you need to work offline? Now, collaboration in Postman depends on teams, depends on workspaces. Now, if you are tired of copy pasting the curl, fighting with workspaces or waiting for your team members to sync the changes, then it's time to switch. In fact, many banks and enterprises are switching to Bruno. Why? Because they need strict data control and offline access. Hi everyone, this is Mukesh Otwani from learnhyperinnovation.com and let me introduce Bruno. The open source, fast, Git friendly API client that you can use for API testing even in offline mode. Using Bruno, you can save entire collection in plain text files. You can even track, commit and collaborate using Git. No cloud, no lock-in, 100% local. It supports REST APIs, GraphQL and many more. And even file-based secrets unlike Postman or other clients, Bruno gives you full control. And the most important part, everything is transparent, editable and version controlled. So these are just few pointers which I mentioned. So they also have a detailed comparison on their website which I will let you know in maybe after a few seconds of maybe few minutes. And the most important part, you can use uh, Bruno for different purposes, okay? Bruno CRI tool will help you to run your test in CICD pipeline whether using Jenkins, GitHub Actions or any CICD tools you can run using CICDs. You will also get detailed report using Bruno and you can also use CSV file, JSON file if you have data driven testing, you want to run one test multiple times with a different set of data, you can use iterate feature. So Bruno is growing fast. Most of the companies started using Bruno already and they have switched from Postman to Bruno. So don't be the last one in your team to use Bruno. So enough of theory, now let me show you practically. Uh, I will show you how to download Bruno, how to install and how to make first API call using Bruno. And after the video, please give a try from your side and let me know if you face any issue. So if you have already tried Bruno, if you are already using Bruno, let me know your thoughts in the comment section and I would love to hear from you. So let's get started with the demo part. So enough of theory, now let me show you how you can get started with Bruno. And uh, in order to start, you can visit their website which is usebruno.com. And they have a very detailed documentation. So I would highly recommend you to explore their documentation. Once you move ahead, we will talk about this feature in detail. But they have a very detailed documentation with steps and the screenshot. And if you are someone who has been working with Postman from a long time, they have a detailed comparison. Bruno versus Postman. So in Postman, we generally save our collection on cloud, right? So this is data sync. Here Bruno comes into the picture. You can work in offline mode. You can stay, uh, you can store your collection on local system. And you can also integrate with native Git. Okay, so basically you can do the team collaboration directly via Git. So you can use all the features of Git here. And developer first. Open source community, extensibility are our cornerstones. We are proud to be an API client and commit to not to bloat with unnecessary features. So if you come back here, you will see it looks uh, similar to any other API client. But when it comes to functionality, we will talk about functionality one by one. Now coming back to all these things, we will see how do you collaborate with good and so on in the upcoming videos. But now in order to start, let's directly start. You can click on this download option. Now there are two ways you can either go through binary or you can go with homebrew option. I will go with binaries. At the time of recording this video, the latest version is 2.9.0. So you can see this is how it has evolved, right? It has evolved from scratch till 2.10.0. Sorry, 2.9.0. We'll go with 2.9. Now I'm using M2. Okay, I'm using Mac M2. So if I show you my system configuration. So I will go with Mac Intel chip. You can also go with the portable. In portable, you don't have to install anything. But I will go with the install version. In case if you're working with Windows, you will also get options for Windows. 
for example if you go to windows you will find windows 64 portable and msi installer in case if you want to go with linux they also have linux binaries so let me go with mac and let me click on first option mac intel chip now it will ask for download so i will just give the download permission It got downloaded. It's a DMG file, so I will double click and install. The moment you click on installation part, you can see we can simply drag and drop to application folder. Now it will take a couple of seconds and our installation will be ready. Now once installation is done, you can just search for applications or you can just press search and search for Bruno. The moment you hit enter, the Bruno will start and it will ask me that Bruno is downloaded from the internet. Do you want to open it? I will say open. And if you want to directly go from here, click on go, click on application and you will find Bruno here. So you can start directly from here as well. Now once Bruno will start, then we will continue with our first API. The moment you start your Bruno and if you're getting started, this is how you will be getting. This is the first screen and I would highly recommend before you start using Bruno, you have to get comfortable with the UI part. Okay, so this is the official home screen of Bruno. The moment you start first time, you will be getting this option, no collection found. You can create your own collection. You can open collection. So we'll talk about what is collection. As of now, you can imagine collection is like a folder where you will manage all your API requests. They also have option directly from here. Let's say if you want to import this collection, you want to open collection, create collection, you can directly do it from here as well. And they also have some external links. So if you want to see the documentation, if you want to report any issues, if you want to check their GitHub, all these links are given. It's a very simple, plain UI as of now. And in order to start, I will be creating the first collection and I will just make a get request. In the upcoming videos, we'll talk about all the other CRUD operations. So now on the left-hand side, you can see collection right now, no collection found. So I will click on create. Now the moment I say create collection, it will ask me the name. You can give the name based on the project. For example, I am testing e-commerce, so I will say e-commerce APIs. Again, in e-commerce, I have, let's say payment APIs. Again, I have user APIs, accounts API. So depends on what kind of APIs you have, you can give the name. So in order to start, I will be using this free open source APIs, which is a JSON placeholder. And if you come back, you can see we have API for post, comments, album, photos, to do users. And they have given the endpoints. Right. So let me go with users. Or maybe I can go with this post. So if I open this. So this is the post I'm getting. The moment you make a get request, you will be getting this response. So let me copy this endpoint. And before we do that, let me make this as post user post api don't get confused with the post we also have post as a http method this is basically comment post user now this will ask you location now this is the usb of bruno you will be storing collection on your local system no not on the cloud and if you notice we did not do any login right so now the when it comes to location if i click on this it will ask me where exactly you want to save so i've created one bruno folder in my documents so you can create any folder of your choice and then you can give that particular location So create one folder just like I created. And now I will say use this folder. So it is users, Mukesh Otoni documents and Bruno and click on create. My collection is ready and obviously we don't have any uh, APIs as such. So it's completely blank. Now the moment you click on it, you can get all the collection information. Obviously you are new to this, so it will take some time for you to understand this. But as of now, it's giving me the details that this is the location where my collection is getting stored. We have not configured any environment variables. We don't have any requests as of now. And you can share this collection. In case if you want to give headers, variables, authentication, script, test, all these things we will see in the future. Now in order to start, what I will do, I will just right click. And you can see this option called new request, right? Click on new request. Now it says you can select what type of request, whether it's HTTP or GraphQL. As of now, we'll go with HTTP. 
and I will say this is get post details. To be more precise, I will say user post details. Now it says which type of URL you want to make. Basically, whether it's a get call, post call, put call. So you can see get post put patch uh, option and head. I will go with get. And I will provide this particular endpoint. That's all. The moment you click on create. Yeah. So this is our get request. As usual, you have parameters. So you can pass query parameters, you can pass path parameters, you can pass body, headers, authentication, variables, script, assert, test, documentation, and settings. There's so many options. But in order to get comfortable, first try with some basic APIs. Once you're comfortable, then you can go with uh, how to pass headers, how to pass authentication, and so on. As of now, you can see this option where you have save. I can also generate the code. So depends on what type of code you want. If you want code in Java, if you want code in JavaScript, right? So you can basically generate the code. Right now we are not interested in generating code. We already saved. So I will click on this option, which is run. The moment I run this, we got the response. And this is the same response, which I was showing here. User ID one, ID one, and this is the title, this is the body. So basically on the left hand side, you can configure how you want to configure your request. On the right hand side, you will be getting response. These are the response headers. So you can see almost 24 headers are coming. And if I go to test right now, obviously we have not written any test. So it says no test form, but you can write your own test directly from here. Here you can see you can actually switch to vertical mode in case if you like this one. And the second option is clear response. Let's say if you want to clear the response, you can clear the response from here. Let me make it again. Now you can actually download. So if you this say save this response to a file, actually it will download and save this response to a file. 200 status code. Okay, is the message. It took 57 milliseconds, obviously because it's a very sample API and the data size. So this is how you can get started with Bruno. You can make one first API call and you will be getting the response. Now, before we end, I want to also show you the assertion part. Okay. So again, for this, I will show you their official documentation, very detailed documentation. So if you see this introduction part, getting started core features, how you can send requests, how do you can use variables? Again, you have different type of variables, environment variable, global environment variable, collection, folder request, runtime variables. These are the Git integration part. Right now I'm going to show you test and a script. So if I come back to test. You also have assertions so you can actually add assertions so you can see you can directly write the expressions which operator you want what value you want for example i want to verify this this is a standard check that we write which is verify the status code so you can come to here and say add expression just type res which is response dot status it should be equal to 200 one assertion only let me make and you can see one assertion pass in case if i make 201 obviously it should fail and obviously since we are making purposeful changes so it says failed one so i will make it again 200 and now it's passed so moving forward we will see different type of assertions how you can write expressions operators uh, different values and so on but I would highly recommend check out the documentation, how you can manage authentication authorization. They also have Bruno CLI, which we will see in case if you want to run collection directly from CLI. So this is our first video, which is getting started with Bruno. After this video, I would highly recommend you to download Bruno, give it a try from your side, make a first API call and let me know your experience. So in case if you find any issues, uh, let me know in the comment section and I will try my best to support you. So thank you so much. Till then, bye bye. Take care.